medieval society in the West, comparable to Hindu society, allowed people to check out of the game. It, it, it revered and encouraged hermits, monks, nuns, of various types of discipline. Now I want to make an observation here about checking out of the game. This is not encouraged in contemporary society. You can't be one on your own without great difficulty. Firstly, because you're a poor consumer. See, around here, there are, we have a number of hermits. There's a guy out there building that boat, and he's essentially a non-joiner, poor consumer. And uh, the community, uh, they live a lot along here. And they are mostly, they are not um, working class people. They are people who dropped out of college because they saw it was stupid. And they're that sort of people. We would call them perhaps beatniks. Uh, but you see, the city doesn't like it because they aren't owning the right sort of cars and therefore the local car salesman isn't doing business through them. Uh, they don't have lawns and so nobody can sell them lawn mowers. They hardly uh, use dishwashers, appliances of that kind, they don't need them. And also they wear blue jeans and uh, things like that, and so the local dress shops feel a bit put out, having these people around. And they are very little, very simply. Well, they, you, you mustn't do that. You've got to live in a complicated way. You've got to have the, the kind of car, you know, that identifies you as a person of substance, status and all that. So there's a great problem here in our society. Now why is there this problem? There's always a very inconsiderable minority of these non-joiners or people who check out of the game. But you will find that insecure societies are the most intolerant of those who are non-joiners. They are so unsure of the validity of their game rules that they say everyone must play. Now that's a double bind. You can't say to a person, you must play, because what you're saying is you are required to do something which will be acceptable only if you do it voluntarily. <laughs> you see? So everyone must play is the rule in the United States. And it's the rule in almost all Republican governments. I mean Republican in the sense of uh, de democratic. <laughs> because they're very uneasy. Because everybody is responsible. You mean you may try not to be and avoid it and say, oh, let the senators take care of it or the president. But theoretically, everyone's responsible. Now that's terrifying. It's all right when you know what's right. There is an aristocracy, there is the clergy, and they know what should, should be done, and they're used to ruling, you see. But now you see, it's in your hands. You say, well, what, what, are you, what are we going to do? Well, I think this way, and you think that way, and he thinks the other way. And so we're all unsettled. And therefore, we become more and more conformist. Individualism, rugged individualism, always leads to conformism, because people get scared. So they herd together, and it compounded with industrial society, mass production, etc. They all wear the same clothes, and they're sensible clothes that don't show the dirt too much. And uh, we get duller and drabber, and uh, with the exception of the Californian Revolution. Uh. <laughs> so it, what, the reason for this is, in a way, that democracy as we have tried it started out on the wrong foot. You see, in the scriptures, the Christian scriptures, it says everybody is equal in the sight of God. Now that's a mystical utterance. That means that from the standpoint of God, 
all people are divine and are playing their true function. And that is something that is true on a certain plane of consciousness. But come down a step and try to apply the mystical insight in the practical affairs of everyday life. And what do you get? You get a parody of mysticism. You get the idea, not that everybody is equal in the sight of God, but that all people are equally inferior. And that's why all bureaucracies are rude, why the police are rude, and why you're made to wait in lines and uh, are uh, obstreperous income tax individuals and all, all that sort of person. And because everybody's a crook. Everybody's equally inferior. See, that becomes the parody of democracy. And that kind of society, watch out for it. It turns in a quick click into fascism because of its terror of the outsider. Now, a free and easy society loves outsiders. In fact, it's a little bad for the outsider's integrity because he becomes a holy man, see? And uh, people make uh, salams and uh, give him food and uh, all that. They really take care of the outsider because they know that man is doing for us what we have the guts to do. That outsider who lives up there in the mountain is at the highest peak of human evolution. His consciousness is one with the divine. And great, just there is someone like that around. It makes you feel a little better. He is realized. He knows what it's all about. And so we need a number of those people. Even though they don't join our game, they tell us, you see, what you're doing is only a game. It's okay, I'm not going to condemn you. But it is only a game. And we up on that mountaintop are watching you. We love you. We have compassion for you. And, uh, but excuse please, we aren't going to join. <laughs> So that gives the community great strength because it tells the government in no uncertain terms that there's something more than government. That's why wise kings kept not only priests but court fools. The court fool is much more effective than the priest to remind the king that after all he's human. And uh, you know how in Richard II, where the fool is called the Antic, the king says, Within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of the king keeps death his watch. And there the Antic sits, soffing at his state and grinning at his pomp, allowing him a little time to monarchize, be fear and kill with looks. And at last comes death, and with a pin bores through his castle wall, and farewell, king. He always is a reminder of the priest or of the antic to the royalty, to the government. You are going to die. You are mortal. Don't give yourself airs and graces as if you were a god. As king, you are only a representative of God. And there is a force, there are domains uh, way, way beyond yours and way, way higher. But it's very difficult for a republican government to realize that because it's insecure. And therefore, in our present world, you cannot abandon nationality without the greatest difficulty. People who try to abandon nationality get constantly deported from one place to another. You must belong to this thing, as Thoreau put it. However far into the forests you may go, Men will pursue you and compel you to belong to their desperate company of fellows. <laughs> <laughs>